Hello guys, welcome to another video. In this video, we would be seeing on how we can chunk the data or how we can split the text data using LangChain. So for the use cases like RAG, where we need to split or chunk the data and store it in the vector DB. In that cases, when you get the data from a text file or a markdown file or an HTML page, you need to split it. So using LangChain, I'll show you how we can split that data so to split the text into multiple chunks, we need to install this LangChain text splitter package. So there are two different text splitters. One is character text splitter and is recursive character text splitter. So the major difference is when you use character text splitter, based on the chunk size, if you give exactly irrespective of the text, it just uh, splits the data at that specific point. For suppose if you have given like split for every hundred tokens. So in that case, the data will be split exactly after 100 tokens. But in case of recursive character text splitter, well, for suppose we have given the same 100 uh, tokens. So uh, after 100 tokens, it tries to split. And if there is any comma or a dot coming in the after next few tokens, then it tries to split after that comma or dot. Instead of directly splitting exactly after the 100 tokens, it even searches for any comma or dot or any continuation kind of stuff and splits at that point. So today we are using this particular text file for many of our scenarios. It's just the state of the union dot text which I found from the internet. We'll use the same. So I'm just opening it using the plain Python and I'm reading it and putting that content in the state of the union variable. So whenever I use state of the union, that means I'm, I have this complete text file content. So here I'm using the recursive character text splitter. So here I'm saying uh, chunk size equal to 100. That means I'm just setting the maximum number of characters allowed in the each chunk of the text and overlap equal to 20. That means for suppose if you see of between the first chunk and the second chunk, there should, there will be some overlap. That's what it means. If you give the less number here, we'll have only very minimal low overlap. That, so if you see here, if you see the members of the Congress and if you see of see of the of congress and if you see the of congress and has been repeated in both the chunks so that's what this means so we are just trying to have the overlap between the two chunks that's it and uh, how should it calculate the length of each chunk so we are giving the default len which means that each character it calculates based on the each character so here we are not using any regex so we have set it as false that's it so now this text splitter will have the recursive character text splitter and when you use text splitter dot create document and pass the actual text, it splits them into multiple chunks. That, that's what has happened here. Each chunk is of type document here because we are asking to create document here. There are few other methods as well. Like for example, if you see down, we have a split text method. So the same text splitter dot split text, it, it has divided into multiple text messages or, or multiple strings in, in a list, something like that. But this is a type document because we are asking to create documents here, a type document. The only advantage is when you create it as a type document, you will have the metadata, one thing and the actual data, both. And we have another option. We can use the separators as well. In the recursive text splitter, we can even pass the separators as well. Like after two new line characters split it, after one new line character, after a dot, after a comma. So we have given all these parameters. And first it tries to get the chunk size. And if there is any new line characters nearby after minimal number of tokens, then it does not exactly split it after 100. It splits after this any of this character appears. That's how the recursive character text splitter works. And that's the difference between the character text splitter and the recursive character text splitter, which we have discussed before. So as I have added uh, this uh, separator variable in this, the same as above. In the above, I, I have I don't have any separator. Here I have added separator. So it tries to split after the separator as well. So it gave more importance to the separator than to the chunk size. That's it. That's what we can see here. And we'll have the data even in the HTML files. So we can even read the uh, content from the HTML files as well and split the data from the HTML files as well. So I'm just pasting the sample HTML file and when you run, so this is what uh, the sample HTML file I have, the HTML string you can call it as because I'm using, keeping it in the string. We can even read the direct from the HTML file as well directly instead of string. So this is what the content and in LangChain to chunk the data 
in the html file or in html string we have we can use the html header text splitter so it splits based on the header so we are saying to split based on the header h1 h2 and h3 this is just the header and this is the description header and description if you see the above text we have h1 h2 and h3 so based on that header we are splitting the data if you see we are just passing the header to split on this list that's it html splitter dot split text of html string html string is nothing but the actual data which we have here that's it and if you see here the data is split based on the header so at every header interval the data is split let me show you that if you see we have a header here and it has only ecosystem and the next header has only introduction of ecosystem so that's how the data should be split here if you see here this has only introduction of ecosystem see the first has only ecosystem like that so that's how the data is split and uh, as you know this is of type document and it will have metadata as well it will have the header one and if you see the header two and when you see the actual data the type of ecosystems this type of ecosystem has two headers one i mean the first is ecosystem and the second is introduction to ecosystem so here that's what it, it has in the metadata so based on that you can filter as well that's how the metadata is used for the fighter one is ecosystem meta two is type of ecosystem that's it and when you use dot page content we'll get the actual data and while using the the same class if you just pass this return each element equal to true by default this is, it, it is false so what happens is it returns the text of each html element so when you go to this html element it has multiple text right so this will be in the one document this will be in one document this will be in another document again this will be in one document this will be in another document something like that so each element in the html will be written as a separate document so if, so what we have seen above is it is just splitting based on the element in the html whether it can be header or some other thing but what if if you want to control it and split it based on the chunk size as well so in that in that case the output of this uh, html splitter which is html header splits should be passed to the recursive character splitter that's what we are doing so we are just having the recursive character splitter and we are deciding the chunk size and the chunk overlap here and then passing so for this text splitter dot split documents we are passing that output of the html header splitter that's it so now if you see it is splitting based on this chunk size and chunk overlap so that's how we can pass this html uh, output to the recursive character text splitter and control the chunk size and like uh, html header text splitter we also have html section splitter so here it splits based on the each section so when you come here we have multiple sections right so this class is one section this class is another section this class is subsection so before this has become one document and this has become another document now we when we go with the section html section splitter we can split so these two will become into a one document that's what is going to happen here and the same metadata comes up and if you see here we are using html section splitter and we are just passing this one it same as above the header and the description header and the description that's it and this splitter dot split text into the html string if we pass and when you print this each section will be of one element in the list of type document if you see this project explores the components types and in the environment so now see this complete become into one section so that's what has happened here that's it see the ecosystem and the project explorer but when you see above the ecosystem is separate and the project is separate so that's how this html section splitter works it splits based on the section so as i have already explained the character text splitter is used to exactly split after the chunk size is uh, reached that's it if the chunk size 1000 after exactly of 1000 chunk size it splits the element irrespective of whether it has a comma after some tokens or if it has dot after some tokens it does not create just exactly splits that's it and we can even read read and split the markdowns as well now i have a markdown here if you see it, it just a sm small markdown about love and now we'll see how we can split this markdowns as well a different approaches by splitting this markdowns as well. if you have a dot md file you can pass that or if you have a 
text of uh, markdown then you can use that one so i am just using the text markdown doc which has the same content which i have showed above and now the class which we need to use from lang chain is markdown header text splitter that's it and we need to just pass it here based on the header now if you see one hash is header one two hash is header two three hash is header three that's what we are doing here right when when i just double click on it see this is header one header two and header two this one so that's how the data should should be viewed if you see when i split it what, what do we have so all this will come into one document and all this come into one document and all this should come into another document so it has written the list of three documents and all the first header will be in the first one and then the second one and the last is the last one so that's how it has written so similar to above we have the same parameter here to this class written each line equal to true when you do this each line will be of one element in this list that's it irrespective of what we have mentioned here when you just make it as true each line in the uh, markdown document will be of one element in this list that's how it splits and similarly how we have passed the html uh, output into the recursive character splitter and control it with the chunk size similarly we can do the same as well so the output of this can be passed to this uh, text splitter and this text splitter is nothing but the recursive character text splitter the chunk size and chunk overlap that's it so this split will, will will never exceed the chunk size of 350 and it will have the overlap of max of 30 that's it if if you see here this, see this has the friendship as the end and again the same thing has overlapped here before so that's how it overlaps because we have given the overlap and the change size will never exceed 250 and now we can even split the json data as well see i have a very huge data json data and we can even split that json data as well using the recursive json splitter and the maximum change size equal to 3 300 that means it splits the json into multiple chunks of size 300 see i just declared this class and i'm just calling that object dot split json and I'm passing the data and when I'm printing so it is just splitting with the chunk size of 300 that's it and if we have an argument here convert list equal to row so when you pass this while splitting it then you will get the output as a dictionary exactly if you see the output is different with the output here so it acts like a dictionary here that's it and we have an another option in Langchain where you can split based on the semantic similarity that means that text of similar meaning should be in the same chunk for suppose if you have a text in which we you are discussing about the multiple topics and chunking that data based on the topics will be very much helpful and for the scenarios like rag when you query you can fetch the all the related data so that kind of scenarios we can use semantic chunker as well in langston we have semantic chunker and for which we need to embed the data and I am using open AI embeddings here that's it and this is my object and when I do text splitter dot create docs and the text which I have read above state of the union and it is splitting so if you see this is two lots that means my semantic chunker has thought that all this text is of similar topic related and it has created a single document out of this that's it so based on the meaning of the actual text using the embeddings it creates the chunks that's it so it is more realistic than just chunking based on the size so while using the semantic chunker we have an option called breakpoint threshold type equal to percentile equal to interquartile equal to gradient equal to standard deviation so i have clearly mentioned the meaning of each and everything here you can just go through it and also open ai as open sourced a module called tick token which is used to calculate the token size based on the encodings so if you pass a text and if you want to know the token size of the text using some encoding we can do that using the tick token so based on that as well you can chunk the data so we just need to use the character text splitter dot we have to call this one from tick token encoder and pass the encoding you want to use and then the chunk size and the chunk overlap that's it so first the text will be encoded and then it calculates the tokens and then it splits based on the tokens that's it so that's how it works we can even use tick token encoder as well
to check the data so these are all the different approaches to check the data we can check the text file we can check the md file we can check the uh, html file that's it thank you so much for watching